Hello everyone, my name is Kelly Witchin and I'm the Digital Publishing Assistant at Michigan Publishing. This demonstration will cover the basics of our journal conversion process, from the time we receive content to making an issue live online. Let's get started! This flowchart highlights all of the steps involved in our conversion process. Don't worry if some of this doesn't make complete sense yet. Throughout the video, I'll break down these steps so hopefully, by the end, all the mysteries will be solved and you'll have a better understanding of the entire workflow. The process begins when we receive new content. Here, the publishing partner for one of our journals, Human Figurations, has sent content for a new issue, Volume 2, Issue 2. I simply save the files into our shared file storage system, checking to make sure I can open the folder and that everything seems in place. Next, I enter the metadata for each article into a system called Hedra. Metadata information, or information about the content, includes data such as article title, issue number, author name, etc., and is used by our platform to index and display bits of the journal content. This system also automatically generates some information, based on the data you've entered. You can see here that the unique identification number for this article, seen here in red, has been created. While the identification number, or simply IDNO for short, may seem like a random string of numbers, it actually breaks down in quite a useful way. We rename all of our files with their unique number, which keeps things organized and in order. You'll also notice ID nodes in the URLs for each journal issue or article. So after all of the metadata has been entered and exported, each of the Word documents needs to be styled. This involves applying styles to each element in the article. While we retain formatting such as bold and italic, Unnecessary structural elements, like forced line breaks or tabs, are removed. As long as the element is correctly styled, it will be formatted correctly online. During this phase, we also add hyperlinks to URLs if they are not linked already. It's important to note that we are not actually reading through the entire article, but just applying styles and checking for any glaring problems. After styling, we save each of the files as an RTF file and upload them to our Michigan Publishing server. Next, we'll run a script called makePub on the files we just uploaded. This script converts the RTF files to XML and reports any errors it finds. Sometimes there are a few and sometimes there's a lot, depending on the complexity of the article. Using the error log as a guide, we fix any issues and do some general cleanup. With all the changes in place, I run makepub again, and if all the files are valid, we're ready to move forward. When the XML is ready, we run an indexing script on the XML files. This puts the XML files into our platform so they can be viewed online. At this point, they appear on our secure development site, so only authorized viewers can preview the material. The new issue is not yet available to the public. Let's pause for a minute to break down the two different types of URLs we use for journal content. The development site is the first place we put new content. We make changes, test functionality, and review the issue on the site. This is also the link we send to publishing partners when it's time for them to preview new material. You'll see that release content lives at a different URL, beginning with quad.lib. Once everything's up on our development space, we check each article against its source document, looking for any structural issues or other glaring problems. At this point, we will also make any changes to the home page or other web pages on the journal site. For example, if new articles will be listed on the home page or if there's been an addition to the editorial board, we'll implement those changes at this stage. If everything's ready to go, we alert the publishing partner that the new issue is ready to review and encourage them to report any problems or corrections. If we receive any corrections, we go back to the XML, make the correction there, run makepub, re-index, and check the corrections online. After fixing any issues and receiving the final OK from the publishing partner, it's time to release the content. We use another script to push all of the content to our public servers. Remember, this is the quad.lib URL we mentioned earlier. During the release process, other steps such as registering DOIs, updating the RSS feed, and building a new browse list happen as well. 
And with that, the journal is live and open to the world. Thanks for taking the time to learn more about the journal conversion process. And a special thanks to the folks at Human Figurations for allowing us to use their new issue for this demonstration.